Hello guys and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be looking at a game called Diluvium. It's one of those games that sort of just popped up out of nowhere from one of those uh, indie game jams that seems to happen all the time where people just make games under different circumstances. And this one is particularly interesting and I thought I would give you a show of it. Um, first of all, the name Diluvium probably means nearly nothing to you if you don't know sort of the background of the word, uh, coming from diluvial of, relating to, or produced by a flood, uh, or could be connected with a deluge, especially with the great flood described in Genesis. So, uh, yeah, what they're going for is the sort of Noah's Ark angle, and once you see what this game's about, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's The closest thing I could compare it to is something like Scribble Knots, where you're typing as fast as you can to think of different animals to summon them. See, that's your character right there on the left, a summoner. Uh, and you want to create these little mini totem poles of as many unique animals as you can think of to defend yourself and attack your opponent. There's not a ton of strategy involved, unfortunately. I mean, it, it's kind of like you just need to get as much on the playfield as possible to defend yourself. And if you do well, you'll just end up overwhelming the enemy forces. And uh, playing in local mode, it seems like it's sort of random uh, to the degree with which they produce enemy combatants. Sometimes it seems fairly easy, other times it's nearly impossible. Like the second you start up, you already have a bunch of stuff attacking you. And you'll notice there's quite a few cameos, like the Katamari uh, princes or cousins, depending on which one you're looking at there. There's also... Uh, uh, what's his name from Fez? His name escapes me right now. Um, Meat Boy makes a cameo appearance. The character from Spelunky, Gomez is his name, um, from Fez. And the games play out very quickly. Uh, you'll see that was already a, a match over with. I don't know why there's a stick attacking me at this point. I'm not sure what you would type to summon a stick. But that doesn't really matter. Uh, the point is that most of the animals, as you type them, are individually drawn with some rather cool art. And it's just really fun to see what kind of stuff you can make come out and defend you. Uh, I, I end up falling back on a lot of the sort of same animals after a little while because it's surprisingly difficult to think of a huge variety of different animals when you're under the amount of pressure. Like, the game is immediately gunning for you, so you have to be typing away as soon as you start. And it sounds like it would be pretty simple, but try it for yourself. It's actually a lot trickier than you'll think. And it also doesn't take every type of animal you think. It doesn't take dinosaurs or bugs for the most part. You'll see I tried to experiment with a few things, and I also tried to come up with uh, what exactly isn't allowed, like in terms of... It says you have to use unique ones, but sometimes it seems to let more than one appear at the same time, so I was trying to figure out exactly what was up with that. Uh, it seems like you can't summon two unique ones on the board at the same time. There you go, so I put Meat Boy and Gomez together on the same one. I have to say that looks a little bit more like Captain Viridian than it does Gomez, but whatever. And I was just trying for some strange vocabulary, uh, you know, finch instead of just a more generic bird or eagle. And it takes some things, but you'll see it doesn't take spider or tick. So like I said, no bugs, really. Uh, it takes a lot of aquatic life. It seems to accept, like, eel and jellyfish, whale. Uh, although a few of them are represented by fairly generic characters as it pertains to their art. So the majority of this, I've just been trying to basically experiment around and see what's up with the, the different combinations you can come up with. Uh, it doesn't seem like it matters a whole lot what's in your totem pole. It might matter whether it's, like, one versus three or, you know, something to that effect, but it, it seems like one versus one, it like doesn't matter if you're fighting a, like a puppy versus a rhino, it, it seems like they're just about on equal footing. So it's more just about how quickly can you type. And I think this game is mostly best fit towards playing versus another live player, and as you can see at the beginning when it started up, it gives you the option of doing just that. You can connect directly to an IP, although I didn't have uh, someone to play against at the moment when I started, so I just did a local match. And the, like I said, the, the AI is pretty competitive sometimes, pretty laid back other times. 
Uh, but it still gave me a good taste for the game, and I definitely liked what I saw here. I'm not sure if this will be developed into anything further, but as it stands, it's a pretty cool demo of uh, a lot of different art that's really beautiful to look at, and a lot of uh, sort of compelling uh, basic ideas which could form into something else if the developer so desired. I also very much like the black and white art style in general. I think it looks very pretty. Um, sort of like a fan Final Fantasy Tactics style map with the overhead sort of isometric view. And it doesn't seem like the map really matters a whole lot. They only fight on the flat areas, it seems. Although they might, maybe they'll hop up once. I don't know. I wasn't paying a ton of attention to what was going on in the battlefield while I was playing. I was mostly just trying to think as hard as I could of more animals to summon. And, uh, I wonder what that guy's head is down there. There's actually a whole bunch of different weird human heads that I've noticed. Maybe they're the developers or something. It'd be really fun if this took the, like, a grander shape of, like, summon all the different types of things you can think of, like, including characters from TV shows, like, um, maybe you could summon Jake the Dog or something. <laughs> but, as it stands, again, it's still a fun experiment and I think it's very well realized uh, for what it is right now. I, I don't have a lot of complaints, and nor should I think I should have many. I mean, it's not its not proclaiming that it's the end-all be-all of whatever it's trying to do. It's just fun. And surprisingly simple, and simple is usually effective. I doubt you'll end up playing this for hours, but at the same time, sometimes a smaller bite of a game is more enjoyable. Then again, if you have some friends to play against, who knows, maybe you will play this for hours, it's quite possible. The uh, music that loops in the background is quite nice as well, I definitely don't have any complaints with that. Uh, it's a very ambient, kind of a, a heavy theme going on, and you can sort of just feel the weight of the art style and the music combining. And I love how the, the hits happen on the beat. It sort of augments what you hear in the music uh, to sort of bring the whole thing together even better. So I thought that was a really nice stylish decision, stylistic decision. So that, I think, just about sums up everything we need to know about Deluvium. Uh, make sure you head on over to facebook.com slash indie impressions and stay up on what's going on on the channel. And I will be back tomorrow with another one. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave some comments and I'll say hi. Later, guys!